Hey everyone, welcome to our Lunch and Learn today. Today we're going to talk about the eight gaps that could be holding you back in your business. And this is one of my very favorite topics um, to talk about because as much as business is about having the right systems and processes and SOPs and all of those things in place, it's equally as important to have the right mindset and the right perspective. So today I want to focus on raising your awareness in areas of personal growth that could be holding you back in your business. And so I want to kind of start with the thought of if you have dreams and goals and want to achieve them, you have to become more than you are today in order to make those goals take place and, and actually make progress. So think of the book, you know, what got you here won't get you there. It's the same kind of principle. So for those of you who don't know me, I am Anza Goodbar. I'm the owner and founder of Audientum. I'm a serial entrepreneur. I have owned about a dozen businesses in the last 12 years. Three of them were eight-figure businesses. The rest were multi-six-figure businesses. I've been in the online space since 2008, and I am a professional business and marketing strategist for service-based businesses. I'm also a John Maxwell certified coach, trainer, and speaker, and a seven-time best-selling author. And as you'll know today, um, I'm also a personal development enthusiast. I really like to geek out on this kind of stuff. So today we're going to cover the assumption gap, the knowledge gap, the timing gap, the mistake gap, the perfection gap, the inspiration gap, the comparison gap, and the expectation gap. And so, you know, wherever we are in our life or business, we're going to hop in and out of those, right? We can't focus on all of them at one point in time. And so we need to focus on the one that's impacting us the most and just continue to raise our awareness on the ones that we're jumping in and out of. So I want to talk, first of all, about the assumption gap. And the assumption gap is really built around the idea that people think we continue to grow. Just like if you look at a baby, um, when they're first born, they're itty bitty teeny weeny. And then, you know, they become a toddler and then a preschooler and then they're in school. And as their bodies grow, they're learning new skills, they're learning new language, they're learning how to deal with their emotions. And there is this false belief that many entrepreneurs have that they will just continue to grow without doing anything intentional. And I just want to assert to you guys today that that's a, a limiting belief, that if we're really going to grow, um, we have to be intentional about creating that growth path. And I like to think about the will of life, right? We are, we are emotional, we're spiritual, we're physical, we're mental beings. And so we want to be able to make sure that we're well-rounded people and that we are focusing on all of those different aspects in our lives. So again, um, personal development, professional development isn't something that just happens organically. We need to be able to plan for it, create a strategy for it, and then be able to follow through. And I'd also like to mention that our inner circle plays a big part in our assumption gap because we tend to surround ourselves with people who have similar values and beliefs. And so if you're feeling stagnant in your personal growth, take a look at who you're surrounding yourself with. Who are those people that you're spending time with and how are they influencing what your ideas of growth are? This is a quote from Bruce Springsteen, which I just think is really funny being in the personal development space. We don't often see him um, in, that, in that light, but he said, a time comes when you need to stop waiting for the man you want to become and start being the man you want to be. And so in honor of National Women's Month, I want to say at times you need to stop waiting for the woman that you want to become and start being the woman that you want to be. So I just thought that was a fun quote from him. So let's talk a little bit about the knowledge gap. 
personal development can be a mystery to people. For people who aren't in that space and aren't used to doing things for their personal growth, they just don't know where to begin. But there's a lot of really simple things that you can do. You can read books, you can listen to books on audio, you can tune into podcasts, you can join a mastermind, you can go to seminars or conferences, you can get some kind of a certification, you can learn a new skill. But one of the best ways is to teach others what you're learning. You learn and retain so much more when you share with others what you are going through and experiencing and how you're applying it. Also, there's something that we need to think about is we're in control. We get to decide where we need to grow or where we want to grow, and we can learn at our own pace, right? We can set the schedule. I'm a fire hose kind of girl. When I want to learn something, I want you to give me everything and I'm going to consume it as quickly as I possibly can. But there's some people who just like to nibble on the breadcrumbs and just have a steady pace. And so look at what's your learning style when you're looking at taking in information. One of my friends listens to audiobooks on two times the, the normal speed. I can't do that. That blows my mind. But I will sit down and I'll spend, you know, eight hours and listen to a whole book in one sitting but I don't get as much out of it if it's going, blah, 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 you know, because that's all I hear. I can't keep up. And I like to take notes. And so I can't take notes and listen and, and be able to process. And so it's really important to be able to know how we like to intake information, how we like to process it, how we like to apply it. And so being aware of that can help with the knowledge gap as well. And then I'd like to just submit to you guys today that there's five areas of focus on attitude, on goals, on discipline, on measuring, and on consistency. And um, one thing kind of stood out to me as I was thinking about that today is using smarter goals to be able to put together your system of creating a measurement, of building in discipline, and um, just being able to be really clear on what you're doing. So for those of you who don't know what SMARTER goals are, they're SMART goals, but at the end you add in evaluation and review. And so you're able to go back and tweak things as you need to. And if you guys are interested in knowing more about that, I have a blog post on my website. You're welcome to go and take a look at that and, and learn a little bit more about using the SMARTER goal method. Um, the timing gap. I think this is one that every entrepreneur I have ever worked with has been dealing with at some point in their career. And it can present itself to you by using words like, oh, I'm not ready. Oh, it's not the right time. I've got too much going on. I'm super busy. Or, oh, I really like who I am. I don't need to change. I don't need to invest any time in, in growing myself. But I want you to think about the law of diminishing intent, which says the longer you wait to do something, the greater the odds are that you will never take action. And so if you have an inkling about something that you should be doing, I would encourage you to act. John Maxwell says you should jump and grow your wings on the way down. Um, you don't have to have all of the, the steps lined up. You don't need to know all of the pieces. Um, you just need to know that you're taking action and you can build momentum. So if you're not taking consi consistent action in your business, you're eventually going to plateau and you're going to lose your momentum. And that starts what I call the stop and stop, start and stop syndrome. And that's where you get going, you get some momentum, you get some good wins and everything's going great. And then you kind of hit a bump and you kind of lose momentum and you just kind of stop. I have to stop and regroup and you just stop taking action. It's really hard to start and rebuild that momentum. So get in the habit of asking yourself, what's next? You've made a launch. You've got your program up and going. What's next? Don't wait until that program is finished to start taking action on what you need to build out next in your business. So think about that every week. Ask yourself that question. What's next? What's next? What should I be working on um, moving forward to keep my business going? The next one is the mis mistake gap. And this one 
um, might hit close to home if you're a recovering perfectionist. Um, failure of failure. Uh, yeah, everyone's like, yeah, that's me, that's me. Um, fear of failure, looking silly or being ridiculed can keep you playing small. Negative self-talk that you have might be, oh, you don't know enough to do that. Or, You're not smart enough. You don't have enough experience. You haven't been doing this long enough. You don't have that certification. Whatever that is, that could cause you from feeling like you can take action confidently could feed into your fear of making a mistake and how that might look for you. So I would encourage you and invite you to shift your mindset and think about mistakes as a natural part of creating more knowledge, more wisdom, gaining more experience, figuring out what works for you and what doesn't. And I think especially in the marketing realm of our businesses, sometimes we don't get out there because we're not sure what to say, how to say it. Um, we're not sure what's going to land, what isn't. And so we don't take any action. But sometimes we have to use trial and error. We have to experiment. And the only way that we can experiment is being willing to fail, willing to make some mistakes and pivot and regroup and try again. Because otherwise it's all theory and none of it is actually active participation in your own business. So think about um, failure as being a natural part of growth and it keeps you moving forward. Um, Warren Bendis says mistakes are simply another way of doing things. So, you know, what works for me in my business might not work for you in your business, but it might be a starting point for you to at least take the first action step and be able to start building some momentum and then being able to adjust your course as you go. So then we have the perfection gap, which is very similar to the um, mistake gap, right? You might feel like you just have to have every single detail figured out before you can take action. You need to know what the right way is and you need to have that path set in stone. You need to have railways up to keep you on the road. You've got to have, um, you know, transportation signs up there letting you know, slow down, curve ahead, yield to this, stop here right? You can go this speed. That's just a, a game that your mind is playing with you. Um, you don't have to have all of the steps in place in order to take action. Analysis paralysis might be something that you're familiar with and you've experienced. Um, that can keep us stuck and holding back. I have a client who um, was a business owner, a very successful multi-million dollar business owner, and she ran into some situations with her co-owners, and she ended up being kicked out of her own company, and it was devastating to her. It's been four years, and she can't get back in the saddle to start doing things again. She gets so caught up in all of the ideas, and she has some really brilliant ideas, but she just stops herself right before she starts taking action. She'll do all the research, she'll do all the planning, she'll create all the stories, she builds out the avatar, you name it. Four years and probably four dozen amazing ideas. And yesterday we were having a conversation and she said, man, I should have taken action. Somebody else is doing my idea. And it's like, yeah, we talked about that, right? And that has been more and more frequent in the conversations that we have but she's not able to let go of the idea that everything has to be perfect and in place before she can actually execute it um, there's this whole idea that you have to have it perfect before you can present it to the world and so um, I would just like to say Imperfect action is always 100% better than no action at all. And even if you're just kind of figuring it out as you go, that's okay. Take the action, be willing to fail, be willing to take that risk and be open to learning because you might figure out a better way of doing things than what you originally even had in mind. So the next one is the inspiration gap. 
And this is where you weigh your interest versus your commitment in your business. And what that really boils down to is how are you showing up in your business? Do you show up and do the things that need to be done even when you don't feel like it? If you don't, your business might just be something you're interested in. It might just be this hobby that you have. It might not be that thing that you're really committed to doing to build a, a business that has consistent and reliable um, income. And I think the inspiration gap also fill, um, can lead you into that stop and start syndrome that I talked about earlier. You know, when you're inspired, you're there and, and you've got all of this energy to put in, you've got all of this creativity, and then it comes to lead generation that maybe you don't love doing. So you don't, right? And what happens when you don't generate leads? You don't have anyone to sell that brilliant thing to, right? And so then you kind of come to this stop. Well, nobody bought that. I don't really know why they didn't buy it, but that didn't fly. So now I have to start over instead of saying, you know what, every day I'm going to do this thing uh, to, to generate leads, whether it's doing cold calling or reaching out in Facebook groups or writing a blog or being on a podcast, whatever it is that you do in your business to generate leads, even if you don't feel like it, right? Sometimes we don't feel like working at all. It's like, I just want to take a play date. It's springtime. It's sunny. I want to go for a hike. I want to go to the beach. But we have to be responsible and we have to show up. And, you know, just like building momentum, you don't get momentum by not taking action. You don't stay inspired unless you're continuing to take action and being really um, consistent in what you're doing. And so I would just invite you guys to embrace the Nike way of doing things and stop talking about it, stop planning it, stop thinking about it, stop pushing it off and just do it because your motivation and your inspiration are going to be the byproducts of the action that you take. 100% of the time, that's the way that it works. Um, the next one is the comparison gap. And this one is what I call the killer of dreams and the killer of businesses. Because when we get in the practice and the habit of comparing our business or ourselves to other people, it's always a losing battle in our mind. Somebody else is always more creative, they're smarter, they're more wealthy, they have a bigger audience, they're more connected, whatever it is, it, it starts creating self-doubt, it starts creating the I'm not enough mentality that, that is so easy to fall into. And so the only comparison that you should be doing is comparing yourself to who am I today versus who was I yesterday, the week before, and that is the, the competition that you should be having. Um, you know, the things that we see on social media are not always reality. People share the very best of the very best of what's going on. They don't always share the struggles, the setbacks, the pitfalls, but we all have those and we all have to figure out how to overcome them. And one of the best ways to do that is just daily reminders of where we are and how much further down the road we are than uh, where we were before. Um, and I, I want you to think about this too. When I, I worked at Focus on the Family years and years ago, and I was a, an event planner, and I was very good at what I did. I was on a small little team of five, and I was the big fish in the small pond. And I didn't think I had anything else to learn in the world of event planning. And um, my marital situation changed, and I ended up having to terminate my um, employment there because of their guidelines on, on all of that kind of stuff. And I ended up going to work for a secular company who had a very different model, um, a very different demographic. And every day for my first year of employment, I packed up my desk at night and I went home thinking, I can't go back and do it again. I don't know enough. I'm out of my depth. Um, this is too hard. Um, and I had people on my team who, who were sabotaging me because of where I came from. They didn't like who my employer was. 
And so they had made some prejudgment. So there were things that they told me were the right way to do things that indeed were not. And it was like, you know, I'm not strong enough. I'm not savvy enough. I, I don't have the tenacity. Had I continued to buy into those kinds of thoughts, instead of shifting my mindset into, I'll show them, I'm going to figure this out. I'm smart. I've got the resources. I'm savvy. I, I probably would have been fired um, if I had continued to come back. Um, I went on to be the employee of the year and the best producer for three years in a row. But that first year was so hard. I know, right? It, it's a huge uh, feather in my cap because you know, I could have given in to the comparison. I can't do this. I didn't come from this world, you know, blah, 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 blah. So, you know, I want you to think about how there are growth opportunities when you're a smaller fish in a bigger pond or in a lake, right? Because you can't grow if you're the smartest person in your circle. You need to have other people who are further along than you, who can aspire you to get to that next rung in your success ladder. And so that requires being outside of your comfort zone. Maybe that means asking for help. Maybe that means getting a certification or taking a course. Maybe it means getting a mentor or working with a coach. Be willing to get out of your head and be willing to look at where you need to put in the work. And again, stop comparing yourself to what others have done and really look at what's possible that you can do. And then the final one is the expectation gap. And I don't know about you guys, but one of the expectations that I had when I started my coaching business was this is going to be pretty easy. You know, I have had these other businesses. They were easy to grow. This has not been easy. The expectation that of how I thought things would go or should go is not what my reality was. And in my coaching experience, it's been that way for about 95% of my clients. Um, when your expectations don't line up with what your reality is, you have to be willing to be committed and be dedicated and be consistent and keep pushing forward. You know, you're going to find the right answer for the thing that you're trying to work through, whether it's your marketing, your advertising, figuring out your niche, getting your languaging right in your offers, whatever that is, it's an ongoing process. And it doesn't stop. Once you get it figured out, it's going to continue to change and evolve as you continue to change and evolve and up-level yourself and your knowledge and your awareness and the lessons that you've learned. And so it's a continual process of renewal that we go through as business owners to keep our business growing and thriving. So a lot of people think that um, growing a business has a lot to do with luck. And so John Maxwell has a, a recipe or a formula for luck. And so he calls it preparation or growth plus attitude plus opportunity plus taking action. That equals luck. So how are you preparing yourself? How are you building into your personal development? So your attitude is where it should be because your attitude impacts your altitude, right? When you're, you've got a great attitude, you're soaring high, you're creative, you're full of energy, when your attitude is waning, you're not feeling motivated, so you're not showing up, you're not taking action. And so I think that's really great. Um, and then I was thinking a little bit more about fears, right? And we all have a fear factor that we deal with. Um, it might be fear of failure. It might be the fear of trading our security for what's unknown. Sometimes it's really easy just to say, stay small and play it safe and be in control of everything. Because if we're going to grow, it means we relinquish some of that control and take a risk. Um, the fear of being overextended and maybe even overextended financially. What if I make this investment in my business and it doesn't pay off is one that I see women deal with a lot. Um, the fear of what others will say or think. Um, how much 
control do we give other people over what we do in our business? I remember when I started my first online business back in 2008, when I told people what I was going to do, they looked at me like I had three heads. They're like, you can't make money doing that. Are you kidding me? It's like, well, if I can make money doing that in a brick and mortar, why can't I do it sitting from my home? I don't understand why you think I can't do that, you know? And for weeks, oh, are you making money yet? Oh, what are you doing? And so it was really fun to say after six months, I've built a six-figure business. And they're like, what? How'd you do that? How could that be possible, right? And so if we give into what other people say and allow them to influence what we think our potential is, we can really limit ourselves on what we can achieve. And then a fear of success. Will it alienate our fear, our peers? One of my clients um, came from a, a moderately income farming family. She was convinced if she made more money than her family did, that they would all disown her, that all of a sudden they wouldn't have anything in common. And she didn't want to lose her family. And so she self-sabotaged in a lot of different ways to make sure that she didn't attain more success than what she thought she deserved or what her peers and, and family members thought she should attain. So I would ask you to ask yourself this question, which emotions are you going to allow to show up and be stronger and louder? And then I would encourage you to feed your faith in yourself and not the fears you have about external um, motivators. So let's talk for a minute about accidental versus intentional growth. So somebody who's just waiting for growth to happen, if it happens, they always say, I'll start tomorrow. They always put it off, but tomorrow never comes, right? People who are intentional about their growth will insist on taking action right now, starting today, not putting it off. Again, looking at the law of diminishing intent, right? They understand that if I don't take action, the longer I put that action off, the less likely it is I'm going to actually take action. They wait for growth to come. Um, people who are intentional, they take responsibility for their growth. They realize that nobody else can bestow it on them, give it to them. Um, osmosis doesn't make you grow by just hanging out with people who are further down the road. They know they need to put in the work. Um, people who are looking at growth happening accidentally learn from their mistakes, right? It's the school of hard knocks. Um, people who are intentional about their growth actually learn before they make the mistake so they don't have to fall down and skin their knees as often. Um, people who are accidental about their growth think it's all about luck, being in the right time at the right place with the right people. And sometimes that, that does happen for us. Um, but people who are intentional about their growth really rely on hard work and dedication, showing up, being intentional. Preser uh, persevering, I always say preserving, uh, persevering, you know, through the long and hard days that, that it takes. Um, people who are accidental are kind of cyclical in their habits. They'll maybe have a jump start, they'll do okay with things, and then they don't get instant results, and so they resort back to bad habits. Um, people who are intentional about their growth, you know, they have a routine. They they fight to have good habits. They build accountability into their life to make sure that they're staying true to themselves, they're being in integrity, and they're constantly moving forward. People who are accidental about their growth, they talk a big talk, right? They're kind of like dreamers sometimes. They know all of these things are possible, but they think that it's just going to happen. If they just speak it into being, there it is. People who are intentional follow through with their ideas. They back those ideas up with an action plan, with a strategy, and they put things on their calendar and actually follow through. They're willing to take risks. Um, they're willing to bet on themselves, whereas an accidental person will oftentimes think like a victim. You know, oh, it was so-and-so's fault, or oh, I didn't make it on time. I didn't learn about that soon enough. Um, oh, I could never do that because, right? Um, 
they think that accidental people think that talent will take them as far as they need to go. And, you know, the talent they have is the talent that they have. They can't grow beyond where they are. And so whatever's going to come to them will come to them inside of this set of parameters. What a cutie, Megan. Um, <laughs> acts are intentional people. Um, they are thinkers. They're learners, right? They're always looking for a way to better themselves. They rely on their character um, and they never stop growing versus people who are accidental. Oftentimes they're like, I got to the end of graduation, whether that's with a, a BA, a master's, a doctorate, whatever it is, and they're just kind of done. It's like, I, I did my time, right? That's where I'm at. And so think about some of those traits and, and look at where you're at, which ones resonated with you. It might be a really great place to um, be able to start developing a growth path for you. So let's just do a quick recap on what we covered today. We talked about the assumption gap. I assume that I'm just gonna automatically grow. The knowledge gap, I don't know how to grow. I don't know where to get started. The timing gap, oh, it's not the right time for me to begin. Um, the mistake gap, I'm not gonna take any action because I'm afraid of making mistakes. The perfection gap, I have to find the best way or the right way um, before I can get started. The inspiration gap, I have to feel it in order to do it, right? If I don't feel like it, I'm not gonna take action. Um, the comparison gap, um, thinking that others are better than we are, and the expectation gap, gosh, I thought this was gonna be easier than what it was. So why is knowing your gap important to you as a business owner, right? It impacts your energy, it impacts your consistency, it impacts your dedication to growing your business. Um, we talked about several different examples today on how that can show up in your behavior, in your self-talk. It allows you to see who you need to have on your team. When we know what gaps we have, we can bring other people on our team to fill those gaps. Um, I was having a conversation with a woman in a networking group the other day and, and we were talking about, she knows she needs to hire a VA to help her get to the next level, but she really wants to be involved in every aspect of her business. And so giving up in order to go up is a gap that she's experiencing and trying to figure out how can I bring that right person in? How can I still feel like I'm in control and not just giving this away? How can I know that I'm going to maintain the quality controls that are important in my business if I let somebody else do it. And so we need to be really aware of the thing that's holding us back. So when we have that awareness, we can create a plan that we still feel that safety, but we're able to still get the reward of getting our business to that next level. It empowers you to know what skills or tools you need to get you to the next level. Maybe you need to have a coach or a mentor. Maybe you need to take a class. Maybe you need an automation in your business. Um, but when we know what those gaps are, we're able to, again, identify in a very clear way what we need and be able to find the approach. Um, it, it raises our awareness on how we spend our time and what we think about. You know, whether we're an intentional grower or an accidental grower, whether there's a fear that's going on, what's going on between our ears and how is that impacting the way that we show up and actually perform for ourselves? Um, there was a time early, early in my business. Um, well, it was a first business. I was a Mary Kay consultant. I could not sell for myself to save my life. I couldn't do it. I could sell for somebody else all day long, but asking for that in my own business was just like a death sentence to me. And I see so many women really struggle with that. They may have been great salespeople in their former career, but coming in and being able to do that on their own sometimes is the most difficult mindset shift for them to make. And so what's going on in your awareness? Where are you feeling stuck or hung up? What are those things that keep popping up? I call that the jack-in-the-box syndrome. When you think you're, you're, 
you know, hanging out, everything's going fine. And then boop, there's that thought again. And you're right back at, at the starting line, right? It just totally wipes you out and makes you feel like I've got to start over. I've got to repave this path of bricks to get to where I was. Oh, I haven't paid my dues. What is that thing that you might be dealing with? And then it really just enables you to change your mindset, shift your perspective, change your internal dialogue, right? It all comes with awareness. So, um, you know, I love books. I love reading. And one of my favorite books is The 15 Intentional Laws of Growth. And it's by John Maxwell. Um, this is where the gaps came from. Um, it, it's a book I read at least twice a year. I take people through mastermind groups because it's so empowering when we have a strategy for our growth, when we raise our self-awareness, when we build that um, intentional habit of building a lifestyle. Um, I, think I, I, I think I shared with you guys, I'm doing a 63-day sugar detox because I know 21 days, they say, is long enough to make a habit, but you need 63 days to really create a lifestyle. And so when we strive to make changes in our life, we need to think beyond just the 21 days. And for some of us, it takes longer than 63 days to be able to do something. I'm a quitter. And if I quit today, I would never go back to it. One bite of sugar is all it will take to break down that bridge for me. And it's that way in a lot of areas of my life. And so I have to be super intentional to be able to create safeguards. So when I think, oh, I just need to not do this once and then I'll jump back in. I know myself well enough to know that that's not how I'm wired. I'm all in or I'm all out. I don't play in the gray area. And so you need to look at where you're at in your own life. And this book really, really helps with that. And then another resource is Hal Elrod's book, The Miracle Morning. He has several different versions of it. Um, they're all super great. But if you're not sure where to start with having a morning routine or that type of thing, building new habits, um, it's a great book to start with. So my final thought for today is personal professional development, take intentionality and consistency. It doesn't have to be time consuming or elaborate. Start small and then keep building those lifestyle changes that you want to see happen in your life. So because we're talking about growth today, what steps can you take today to get started in building personal development into your daily lives? You can create an action plan for one or more of the gaps that you felt um, were impacting you. You can find an accountability partner, <coughs> excuse me, to help you build consistency. This is one of my favorites. You can use your journal to track your progress. You can create categories that you want to track. You can use it for asking yourself questions to keep you motivated and accountable to yourself. You can create a scheduled appointment with yourself every single day to develop time. I'm sorry, one second, guys. <clears throat> there we go. Um, and make that time, you know, non-negotiable as if it were a meeting with another CEO. <clears throat> and then you could join the 5 a.m. club and you could get up every morning before everything gets crazy in your life and have that dedicated time. So I would invite you to choose one thing um, to get started with today. And then I wanted to leave you guys with a quote in, our, in honor of National Women's Day or month, I should say. And this is by one of my favorite women. I, I just love a, a lot of her quotes. One's philosophy is not best expressed in words. It's expressed in the choices one makes. In the long run, we shape our lives and we shape ourselves. And that's by Eleanor Roosevelt. So um, love her. Um, so many great lessons can be learned from her. Before we leave today, do you guys have any comments or feedback? Um, this obviously is a, a topic I just love talking about because it impacts our personal lives, our professional lives, our relationships with ourselves, which also affects both of those other two areas. So I'd love to hear any takeaways or anything that you'd like to share before we close out.
Well, I just want to say thank you, Anza. I really appreciate, uh, of course, you putting these on. And uh, I've been sick for the last couple of days and felt kind of draggy this morning, but, um, you know, made a list of uh, workshops <laughs> while we were chatting. So thank you just for the inspiration and, and helping me, um, yeah, get back into my business mind today. Awesome. Thank you. Glad you're feeling better. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> me too. I'm happy yeah. that you're here and that you're feeling better too. Uh, no fun to feel yucky. No. Um, yes. Thank you so much. It's, I I really it's interesting to look at you know the the different like we're on this side of the pond and we want to be over there. <laughs> right. What's holding us back? And I like that the gap analogy. And so there was there was quite a like. You know, it's like, okay, I feel like I'm pretty good in that category. And so it's interesting to look at. And that's what I've been playing with lately of, um, are you interested or are you committed? Because I know in my work, it's like a lot of people, and you both know this, you know, is we, we have, well, I'm interested in, in making this a habit and getting healthy, but are you really committed to that? And so I've kind of turned that back on myself of like, well, what's it going to take for me to fully feel like I'm committed and recognizing that it's an identity shift. And, and, and so for me, the one that really um, leaped out at me was the first one because of being an, a sort of like classically hardworking high achiever, it's that I've put this like title or identity on the other side of the pond, which will only be like, I'll only get to wear that cloak once X, Y, and Z has been accomplished or achieved. And I know that that's a discrepancy and I know that the inner work comes first and I know all of that conceptually, right. but it seems that like in actual application to myself, I've like really let that slide. <laughs> so I've, I've really recognized over the last little while and especially, you know, the last week that like that the, the time is now to begin to really assume that now and, and not be waiting and like placing it on this other like threshold. And so Mm -hmm. really you know what I was shared in the comments about the um being more strategic but then I like one thing that Brandy knows um well is that I, I am a huge advocate for giving gold stars to ourselves and learning to celebrate ourselves in the little wins mm -hmm. because it can be so easy to be in that like only if and when will I feel like this so thank you yeah. for all of this it's been helpful yeah. I so appreciate what you said because I think that many women struggle with that same kind of thought process in that I can, I can be happy when, or I will be happy when, or I can be successful when, and when never comes. And so being able to be present and in the moment and not too future focused. I mean, I think that we need to have that what's next mentality as far as growth and momentum goes, but we need to be able to be present right now in the future and celebrate even the tiniest of things. And I have a, a section in my journal for those little wins. And I'll share this quick story with you uh, before we go. One of my clients was huge into gratitude and wins. And every Friday, we would meet for an hour and we would list out our wins. And the first, the first week, you know, the things that we were grateful for and felt like, you know, were celebratory. We had like 60 between the two of us. On our fourth week, we had 478 things between both of us with things that we were grateful for, things that were celebratory. And maybe they weren't things that we did ourselves, but they were part of a collaboration. And so we had a hand in it. And oftentimes, I think that women don't take credit for things that they were a part of, unless they owned the whole thing. And so being able to shift our perspective and say, wow, I accomplished a lot this week. I made an impact. And I think the way that we view how we make an impact um, can shift and be really beneficial for us when it comes to really it, it, um, embracing that growth mindset, right? And, and looking at all of the different ways, because sometimes, and I am so guilty of this, I see myself with one hat and I forget that I'm multi- dimensional in the ways that I can create, create impact and make a difference. And I think that practicing those little wins helps us to see ourselves in 
um, a multitude of ways that we don't necessarily do because we just get used to how other people see us and the role that they've cast us in. And we just play those roles because it's comfortable, it's familiar. And I think that that practice really helps us um, jump out. So thank you for bringing that up. I think too that women, uh, maybe people in general, like we, I've noticed from clients, they have a hard time celebrating their wins because they're supposed to be humble. Mm. Uh, they're not supposed to boast. They're not supposed to, you know, we have so much, um, I don't know, cultural shame around succeeding, uh, which is so bizarre to me. But uh, I see that a lot with clients too. Like just, it takes, you know, four to six weeks to get them comfortable with the idea of celebrating themselves. Uh, and women especially, so, yeah. You know, I think that's a really great point. I um, work with a lot of faith-based women and being able to celebrate themselves without sounding prideful or boastful is yeah. super hard for them. But then on the money side of their business, um, they have this concept that God wants them to be poor, that they have to struggle and sacrifice and, um, and so we talk about that, you know, what does that mean from a scriptural standpoint? Because the more money we have as faith-based people, the more we can give away to help others. And so um, we take a look at what their belief is and how they're conditioned and, you know, how do we turn that around so we can be in, in integrity, right? Because our actions are born from our core values. And if our core value is that limiting belief, we're never going to be able to move past it. And so how can we, you know, reframe it or dig deeper or learn more? Or, you know, was this a cultural thing that was written, you know, eons ago? Is it still applicable today? And what does it mean for us today? And so I think that that's really a, a smart thing that you're able to see and talk to because all of these things play into how we excuse me, show up in our business and how much success we give ourselves permission to embrace and achieve. Because at, I think at the core, we're giving ourselves permission to make that choice, to take that action, to receive that reward. Um, because I don't know about you guys, I was raised to be a perfectionist. And in my home, love and attention, attention, affection, everything was based on perfection. And so, you know, when I started my business, I didn't feel like I could earn money if it wasn't delivered perfectly, you know? And so I found myself not charging for stuff if I had a learning curve. That's no way to build a business, right? And so I think that really just raising our self-awareness um, by looking into some of those gaps that we talked about today can really help us push through those things that are causing us to limit our ability to really move forward and achieve the things that you know we hope and dream and desire because at the end of the day we all deserve to have our dreams come true no matter how big or small they are we all deserve to be able to claim those wins and have those successes and make that impact and create those transformations so i'm so glad you guys were here today thanks for showing up Thank you so much. You're welcome. I'll see you guys next week. Yes, thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.